This is my covered diamond recovering facility at a hidden location in southwest Arkansas. Um, it's been requested I show you what's behind the privacy fence here. Brent and Zach and Troy and Carl and others have requested to see my plights jig, but I'll show you everything here for a minute. First, in, in diamond recovery, you need water. So we have this pit dug, this pond made, and one third of it has lamparite under it. Over here in the corner, that one third is like the thumbnail of the mitten for Twin Knobs 1 Diamondiferous Lamprite Intrusion. I'll show you on a map sometime what I'm talking about. But um, it's nice to have this covered so that you keep the sun and the rain off of you when the weather's bad. In fact, it's going to start raining in a few minutes. You might hear thunder here. Let me show you around real quick. I got a toolbox that I can lock, keep stuff in. Um, this is my setup. I've got two wash tubs. I can put my screens on it but um, what I do I start I dug this gravel out and I've got a pretty good mound of it here and I need to be working on it but I've been doing other things like setting up my diamond recovery facility and stuff but I've got a mountain of possibility right here a lot of gravel I need to wash through and there's good diamond indicators in it and I have found one tiny ugly diamond so far but the best Indicator of diamond is diamond itself. Uh, this is what I've washed so far, just a nick out of the corner, but already got encouraging results. After I shovel that up, can you hear the thunder? Then I put it in this cement mixer and I've got a garden hose of water running continually as it stirs and the clay and mud washes out of it and the heavies the gravel and diamonds stay inside this um, this uh, instead of using city water and paying for water that goes through a meter I've got two pumps here in the water one is electric and one is a battery powered pump that way I can have one running on the mixer and I can have one over here where I'm sorting the gravel according to size what I, I run a batch and once I get all that gravel, then I, I'm over here washing it, sorting it according to size, while I've got another batch washing in the scrubber. And then I can just do the process all over again. Yes, there used to be a giant oak tree here where this carport, you know, is sitting now, but I had to cut it out. It was kind of dying and dropping limbs on me anyway. I was always over here trying to wash stuff, but... Uh, It'll be much better covered, and I've got some lights in here. And uh, this is a gravel pump. Uh, all I got to do is mount a motor on it, get some pulleys and a belt going, and uh, that, that's an amazing piece of equipment, really. But uh, And this is a grease table. And I have a 55-gallon drum of DB43 uh, diamond recovery grease as well that I'll try. But I, I've got my implements of destruction all ready to go I can dig and then this is a good uh, gravel sorting table but um, what you wanted to see what it's been requested for me to show you is my secret weapon and that's a plights jig people don't even know what a plights jig is but it's an automatic saruka it's a motorized saruka some of you are probably wondering what is this redneck hillbilly contraption on the side here well when I got it it didn't have a cover for the fan belts and I didn't want me or somebody get a finger in in there and uh, lose it so for safety and uh, because I was cheap and didn't want to buy a cover I used what I had and uh, so let me show you how this uh, plice jig works you uh, simply flip the switch and it jigs up and down. It's got a pulsating motion to it. See, see my hand bouncing in there? The gravel bounces like that. The heavy material drops to the bottom, and the light material water flows over the top. Now, with a regular Saruka that we've always used, oh, this is what the 
Barucas look like in the flight jig. They're brass with uh, stainless steel wire mesh and they're real heavy, I don't know, 45 pounds, something like that. That way, when the machine throws it up, it drops back down because of the gravity and the weight. I'm going to shut that off for just a minute. Um, we'll, we'll have a demo in a moment. I've got some gravel all run through it. The beauty of this is, at the crater, you put about a cup full of coffee mug full of uh, gravel in this and saruka that and then flip it. Well, this one... You can run bucket after bucket after bucket through this and the light material just waterfalls over the side and you can fill that Saruka with your heavies. Then you lift that out of there and I set it on, this is sloped, see how I've got it? Because you want the water to drain out of it. So then I, I set it here full of gravel and let it drain for a while. After the water is drained out of it, I take this and I put that on top of the gravel and then I can put my thumbs here and hold that and I flip that over and then I set it on one of these Saruka boards and I carry it over set it out in the sun to dry and then I can bring it in here put it under the magnifying lamp and find the diamonds in it separate out all the heavy sometimes I'll go back and do a reconcentration of the the best stuff you can tell you know where the spinels are all hitting in the pile and sometimes if I want a cone shaped instead of a flat saruka I can just set this saruka in here and let the machine do the bouncing for me it saves my back and uh, anyway I usually do that when I reconcentrate the heavies to look at them again I don't just look at them once and throw them out because uh, I don't want to lose any diamonds no diamond left behind well, I'm going to run some gravel through this in a minute, but let me talk about my pumps again just a second. Here's the battery for it, and when you have a battery-operated pump, <laughs> that's real important to make it work. And then I've got a battery charger. It'll run all day. It'll pump all day, but I've got the pumps in these buckets so that it doesn't get down on the bottom. And I've got these high-tech floats to keep them off of the bottom. I don't want... The pump to suck up a rock and break the impeller in the plastic pump but uh, that's my electric one it's in a bucket water can get in it and yet it's uh, rigged with that flotation device so it doesn't sink this one is actually hooked to this deck so that it won't drop down unbelievably tiny pump but it moves some good water so i'm going to get the pump going just take a second and then we'll get the jig going and then we'll drop some gravel in it and then you can see what that looks like. So we've got my water here and you just pour it in here and it feeds it through it. It's got a dial with different sized holes for how fast you want to feed it but uh, I'm in no hurry for it to go through that hole so let me turn the jig on the plates jig. It's got cobwebs on it. You can tell how much I've been using it lately. I've been doing other stuff. But anyway, we're spinning. See how it, it offsets? That is what causes the jigging motion. That's what makes this arm work that holds that up and down. It is sweet. It'll just come like that all day long. That little arm working itself to death. That's better than you working your own arms to death. Anyhow, I love this. I love this white jig. Oh, when it fills up with water and things, it overflows on this side and goes on out. Um, like I said, you can just keep filling it and filling it and filling it with gravel, and the gravel water falls over there. Well, once this bin is full of gravel, all I do is disconnect the drain cap here and let the gravel and the water go back into the pond and settle out. And uh, I can fill it back up real quick, just put the cap on. So I'm going to try to do this with one hand. And you can wash your bucket out. And then it's feeding it. See how it just feeds through that orifice, through that hole in that dial. And it's going right in to the Saruka. Okay. Just about got all of it washed out. Alright, we really don't need the water anymore. It's just 
this lit and jig for a minute. So I'm going to undo the battery. And uh, when you're doing the Saruka by hand, you kind of get tired and you stop after a while. But it doesn't matter how long you let this machine run, it just keeps on clicking. So uh, I, I love the way this works. And yeah, I've given you a tour and shown you my secret diamond recovery weapon that I hope to have a, a lot of time to use this summer now that I've got shade and uh, I've taken you behind the privacy fence to show you how my secret weapon works. So this is a flight jig and uh, it's a sweet little darling. It is heavy and it is bolted down. Um, so if you're going to steal it, you know, plan it accordingly. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyhow, I'm glad to show you around. I wasn't going to, I was going to keep this quiet, but I had so many requests to show, you know, my setup here. And so now after months of getting this ready, getting the pile prepared, getting all my equipment set up, getting some lights in here, getting the electrical figured out. Oh, uh, you can tell I'm not an electrician, I'm a plumber, but you know what? I got electricity going to everything. This light even works off of a battery, and this is a uh, battery deal. But anyway, we uh, got it all set up for diamond recovery. Now I'm gonna shut the jig off and let it be quiet for a little bit. Uh, if you were wondering, what is this doing sticking out there? Well, this is a pipe I run all the way down to the end of this pipe so that if this plugs with mud and things, all I have to do is pull this out and it opens up a hole so that the water can start washing through and then it washes all the mud and gravel out. I never have a plug up anymore. Uh, Anyway, if you do have a plug up, if you just let this fill with gravel all the way to the bottom of the Saruka that's jigging in there, you can just stick the garden hose up the end until it flushes out and dump it out. It's really been no problem. Anyhow, this, this holds a lot. You can jig for a long time, run a lot of good material through it before it fills up, before you have to dump it and uh, fill it with water and start all over. But that is a Plyce jig, and that's my secret weapon, weapon my sweet baby and uh, I, I'm glad to have a chance to show you.